here's my story. I'm 16, black, and have family down in Alabama. They farm and own a huge amount of land down in Huntsville. My uncle owns a big house and a bunch of trailers they put out in the woods for hunting or for camping. Well, my down south cousins suggest that we go there to camp. And they know that I'm a city kid from Chicago, so... For that, they tease the fuck out of me. Anyway, we collect food, kill a pig and some chickens, and bring necessities out to camp for a few days. We get to the camp, and... It's obvious that something is... Well... Off. The air has this weird electric smell, like right before a storm. Like... Like... Ozone. We think nothing of it and unpack, and then go down to a little creek to swim for a few hours. Well, all of a sudden, some older white guy and a white teenager come out of the bushes. The older one has a shotgun in the crook of his arm. He says hello and asks us what we're doing this far back in the woods. I tell him about my uncle, whom he knows, apparently, and we say that we're camping out. He seemed okay with it, but... He tells us that we need to be real careful out here and stick together. Because... Apparently... There was a big animal in the woods. His son, who is my age, asks if he can stay and hang out with us. He says okay. So we end up playing football. Dicking around with me, there's the white kid whose name is Tanner, five of my cousins, and then four of their friends. And in total, there were five girls and six boys, all of us around 15 to 17 years old. Well, we ended up just dicking the whole day away, having fun. And when we were done, we head back to the camp and pull out some stuff for a campfire even though both of the trailers both had kitchenettes. Tanner says that his family's property sits right up against my uncle's, and he wants to run home and ask his dad if he can come out camping with us. My cousin named Rooster says he's going to go with him since it's going to get dark soon, and he wants to make sure that he's okay. And one of the girls also wants to tag along. By then it was about 7 o'clock, and it was starting to get dark. They take flashlights and take the trail towards Tanner's property. The rest of us chill. We make s'mores, drink, and kiss a little bit on the girls. About 30 or 40 minutes later, there's the smell of ozone again. I mean, you, you could smell it over the smell of the fire we had started. It was this... really... nasty... coppery kind of smell, like right after you had a nosebleed and it stopped. It wasn't exactly like dried blood, but it was that... that nasty, metallic, that back-of-your-throat smell. We immediately think it's some kind of electrical malfunction. Or maybe someone left a hot plate on or some shit. We search the trailers and... find that nothing is on. And by now we can all smell it. All of a sudden... We hear people booking down the pathway towards us and see that Rooster, Tan, and the girl all come running into the clearing out of breath. A and they don't even break stride, they all run right into the trailer, right by where the fire is. We all decide to get the fuck out of there and get into the trailers. After a few minutes, they end up coming down. Fuck, even Rooster was crying his fucking eyes out at this point. All the while, the fire is guttering lower 
and lower, so my other cousins decide to say fuck it and are about to go outside to get the generator out of the shed that was between the trailers. Immediately, Tanner cuts that thought off and goes, Fuck no! Lock the front door! Ain't nobody else going outside! He's been crying too. His eyes are all bloodshot and puffy and looking closer. I noticed that his pants were filthy, like he tripped and fell and ate shit in the dirt or something. He goes on to tell us that they went up to his house. His father said sure to the idea of him going camping with us, and that, to make sure, we were careful on the way back, and that maybe take one of the hunting rifles just in case. Evidently, Tanner had seen something in their yard just a few days prior. One of their pigs had come up, ripped up and half-eaten. They assumed at first it was some big cats or coyotes, even though they don't usually fuck with live animals. He had gone upstairs to pack his stuff and told his dad that they would be okay without the rifle because coyotes typically avoid people. So they started walking back towards where we were camping. By this point, Rooster finally stops crying and shaking. The girl already had, but she was just... staring out the window with a dumb look on her face. He chimes in and says they had gotten halfway into the woods towards the camp. When... They started to hear really weird shit in the forest. It was almost pitch black at this time, so they weren't sure at first what the fuck it was. The girl says that she had heard something in the bushes right off the trail, and they all beamed their flashlights over there, and there was... There was... Someone... Someone standing back in the woods in a little hollow. Rooster said that they all shouted at him and told him that he was scaring the fuck out of them and... about how what a tick he was. He says that... That's when they realized... That the guy was facing away from them. So... They kept walking. That was around the time they started to smell that nasty, coppery ozone smell. They said that they took off into the forest on the opposite side. And... It's a guy. Standing in the forest backwards slightly closer to the path. So now they start power walking, and Tanner keeps going, I should have taken the fucking rifle. I should have taken the fucking rifle. I should have taken the fucking rifle. As they're telling the story, the smell is... Still super strong, even inside the cabin. They say that after they started walking faster, a kind of... Kind of... Low gibbering... Had started coming from both sides of the woods. As they started booking it back to the trailer... The girl... Said that she had flashed her flashlight out into the woods to the side of them and had seen something jerking itself through the woods. The gibbering just got louder and louder, and when they could see the light coming from our campfire, something, something had come out of the woods about 40 yards behind them onto the track. And they all just flat out ran as hard as they could to the trailer. 
So, we're out in the fucking woods, and we're assuming at this point it's some rednecks or some shit trying to fuck with us. All of a sudden, my other cousin, Junior, starts going on and on about how he went to school with a native kid that was telling him about the goat man or some shit. We promptly tell him to shut the fuck up because we don't need any spooky talk right now, but he just keeps going on and on and on about how it's the fucking goat man and how we're in his woods and blah 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 blah. Now at the time, I had never heard of this goat man or any of that. But then a couple of years ago, the year before I graduated from college, I had a menum for a roommate and ended up asking him about it. To summarize it, it's basically a fucking man with the head of a goat. He can shapeshift and he gets among groups of people to terrorize them. It's supposed to be kind of like the Wendigo and it's bad mojo to even talk about it and it's even worse if you see it. Now keep in mind, I didn't know any of this back when I was 16. So my cousin is going, the goat man's going to get in and fucking get us, and the girls are all terrified, and my cousins and I are all trying to figure out if it's just some hillbillies or if it's some kind of animal. But then... Then all of a sudden... The smell, the, the coppery, nasty ozone smell, just goes away. Like, to this day, I haven't even experienced anything like it. Like, usually smells fade away or lessen. It was literally just there one second, and then not the next. Anyways, after about an hour, making it around 9 or 10, we've stopped shooting bricks enough to go back outside and stoke the fire again. We figured that it was just some assholes trying to fuck with us, so we don't go back home, because we think if we do, whoever was out there would chase us through the woods or some... I don't know, do some crazy shit or something. Nothing else weird happens that night. And we stay another night. And for the main part of the night, nothing happens. At about one in the morning, we're outside getting drunk and telling ghost stories. As someone is finishing up some too spooky story, I don't remember what about. The smell. The smell comes back. This time, it's so fucking strong that one of the girls literally starts to vomit. stand up and you can actually feel just how clammy the air has become. I say we should get inside and that this isn't right and that that we should have just fucking left when we had the chance. We all go back inside and we're standing around. Junior keeps going on and on again about how it's the goat man and Rooster tries to shut him the fuck up. And all the while, I'm just, I'm just feeling that something is wrong. Something is wrong and I can't figure out what the fuck it is. We end up sitting there for a while, the smell just as strong, and we're terrified and all huddled in this little camper. We end up cooking broths for everybody because... 
Nobody wants to go outside. Anyway, it's one of those packs with four brats. In total, we have about three packs. I grill them up on the stove and give everybody a hot dog. Then afterwards, I get mine. After a while, one of my other cousins gets up and goes over to the pot to get another one. Then he starts grumbling about how I got two brats while everybody else got one. So I look at him like he's fucking stupid and tell him that everybody only got one because there were only 12 brats and if he wanted more, he should open up a new pack and cook some more. That's... That's when the girl that was out with Tanner and Rooster the previous day starts screaming. Oh Jesus! Oh Lord! Get it out! She's crying and shivering and then... And then it dawns on me and the cousin who was standing up just what the fuck was wrong. Me and him both glance around the room. Then I see it. And I feel my heart fucking sink. I run the fuck out of the cabin and the girl runs out with us. The trailer door is banging against the side of the trailer as everybody books it out of the cabin. One of my cousin's friends asks us what the fuck was wrong. And I start counting us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's only eleven now. I shit you not, my cousin verified. There... There had been twelve people in the cabin just moments before, but being that... Everybody didn't really know each other that well yet, nobody had realized that the whole fucking time... That... There was an extra person. And... Then I realized that... Earlier... I had noticed that something was kind of off. You know how, when you're just dicking around having a good time, you don't spot the small stuff? And that you don't always keep track of certain stuff? Well... I'm dead sure that somebody else had been in that trailer with us. And that they had been there for at least a fucking day. Eating with us. Standing around with us. Just being with us. What makes it worse is, I could figure out which one it was because I don't think that anybody ever actually interacted with the other person. The... The goat man. The girl kept praying to Jesus. And... We're all sitting outside. Eventually, we get big-ass sticks and go back into the cabin to check it out. But... There's nobody there. We count again, and there's still 11 people. We go back into the trailer and lock the door. We explain what the fuck happened to everybody else, and... The girl... The girl that was with Tanner and Rooster, the one that screamed, she said that... That she realized it too. And that... When she was about to say something... The person sitting next to her had grabbed her leg hard and leaned over towards her... And said something that she couldn't understand. So, we're pretty much just 
scared out of our minds as we huddled together. After a while, I finally managed to fall asleep. When I wake up, the sun is just coming up, and half the people are still asleep, and the other half are packing our shit up. We all want to walk back home, but like... Four people... Four people want to stay until the sun is all the way up. And some people think that we're just fucking around and still want to stay at the trailers. I just want to get the fuck out of the woods. The girl's name was Kyra. The one that the goat man had touched, the one that had screamed, the one that, that initially went with Rooster and Tanner at the beginning of all this. Anyway, I asked her if she really thinks it was something bad. And she says she just wants to go home and that she doesn't want to be out in the woods alone for another night. So, we decide to split up. The four that want to go can go, but I have to stay because I have the keys to the cabin and because it's my uncle's, I have to lock it up. I'm super pissed at this point because I feel like people aren't taking this shit seriously. And I definitely didn't want to be out in the woods for another night either. I spend the rest of the day trying to convince the last of the group, now four girls and four guys, to get the fuck out of Dodge. Tanner leaves with them to go and get a rifle, and says he's going to be right back. So, there are just seven of us, left by 4pm. At around 5pm... He hasn't made it back yet. We're all getting extremely fucking antsy, and the only reason I stopped begging everybody to go back was... because Tanner went to go get a gun. 5.30 rolls around, and... when... the one cousin that did stay... says something odd. That the girl, Kyra, is outside. We all look outside, and sure enough, she's standing by the fire pit with her back to the cabin. Now I'm thinking to myself, if she was so fucking scared, why the fuck would she come back? And then... Then I get this really nasty feeling in my gut. Keep in mind, the whole time, the whole time, the coppery smell has been gone. But now, now I realize that I can smell just a twinge of it. I say this to the rest of them and everybody, and these are the people that wanted to stay in the fucking woods after we had the goddamn goat man in our midst, are laughing at me and asking if I set this whole thing up to scare them. I'm looking at them like, I'm not fucking bullshitting you all right now. I ask them why the fuck would I play like that, and... That's when one of the girls goes outside to get Kyra. She gets about halfway to her and stops cold. Kyra starts... heaving. I don't know how the fuck to describe it. Just... um... It was sort of like if somebody with their back turned was... laughing. Laughing without making any actual sound. It was this fact that made me realize that there was not a fucking sound in the whole woods. No insects, no animals, no nothing. It was just dead silent. 
Now this was like later in September, so it was still fairly hot at the time. But it was still super chilly on some days too. And you could usually hear some big ass geese honking or some kind of birds or squirrels chattering. So I step out of the door and I tell her, come back, get back in the fucking trailer right goddamn now. She backs up into the trailer and we lock the fucking door. We pull down all the shades except for one, and we put one of the guys there in a chair to watch her. Kyra stands there for another 20 minutes or so, and the guy was about to turn to us and say that she's still there. Then there's a huge fucking bang on the door. We all jump the fuck up and scramble around the living room of the trailer. The banging is so... So damn loud. Now my cousin is holding one of the girls, and the other two are kind of giggling with nervous laughter, and me and the other two guys are shitting bricks. Then we hear Tanner. We hear Tanner, and he's screaming, Let me the fuck in! Stop fucking playing! So we go over to the door and open it, and he stumbles in with a rifle. There's nobody else outside. Evidently, he had walked up to the campsite, and nothing weird happened in the forest. But... He had seen a girl. Mind you, he said it wasn't Kyra that was standing there. When he had gotten to the edge of the clearing, she had turned towards him with a slack-chawed kind of look, and just stared him down, slowly tracking him as he walked around the outside of the clearing towards the camp. He said it wasn't until he was almost halfway that he had realized she was getting closer to him. She had started off by the fire, and without him even seeing her move, she had been turning, inching closer. He said he just ran the rest of the way back to the cabin, thinking it would open. And when he got to the door and saw that it was locked, he turned. And it, it was about half of the distance to the door. That was when he looked around the room and got super pale. He pulled me to the side and whispered in my ear, you know that there are only seven of us in here, right? I get that feeling where your stomach drops to your nuts. It had been back inside the trailer while we were sorting out who was going where. And then when we all went outside to talk earlier in the day, it had just, it just slipped right back in. We look out the window and there's nobody there anymore. So we recount everybody and then basically, I go over and ask everybody how many people were in here earlier. Everybody says eight. I say, well, how many are here now? They all do the count and realize one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are now only seven people in the cabin. So, Tin had brought a couple boxes of ammo in his rifle. He told his dad that there was some kind of animal in the forest because he didn't think that his dad would believe him if he said it was a goat man. He says that his cousin is supposed to be coming down in a few hours and that in the morning we can all go back to his place and his cousin will drive us home. 
Now, I'm really fucking terrified, but at least... I can at least feel better, because we can be American and shoot the fuck out of whatever it is that comes back. But then... Then my cousin gets into this huge argument with one of the girls because she thinks that I'm trying to be funny and prank them and that she's getting really scared and that I'm not funny. He keeps telling her I'm not that kind of person, but then she says, well, how do we know that the girl wasn't just Tanner in a wig? Or if it's really the goat man, how do we know that this is the real Tanner and that the goat man didn't just kill Tanner in the woods and take his gun? So we get into a huge fucking argument about this. Where me and Tanner are like, we could be in serious danger because at the very least, someone has been sneaking themselves into our trailer without us knowing and fucking mingling with us. And at worst, at worst, something bad is in the forest fucking with us. One of the girls is crying and saying that she wants to go right now, and we're trying to tell her that we shouldn't because none of us are walking through the woods in the middle of the night. It's at this point that the sun is starting to go down, and it's even starting to get a little cloudy outside. We eat something and turn on the radio for a while, but we can't really get a station out there with anything decent. So around the time that we finally turned it off was the time that Tanner's cousin finally shows up. He was, like, 19, I think? I don't know. Anyway, at this point, the sun is just barely over the horizon, and he has one of those heavy-duty lantern flashlights and another rifle. He walks up to the trailer, and we whisper to Tanner, asking if he's positive that this is his cousin. He says yes. The guy looks behind him and all around the camp, then walks in. He kind of glances at all of us and looks a little confused. That's when he asked, Where's your other little buddy at? I figured that she would meet me up at the cabin. Is she a little slow or something? Also, have you guys been cooking blood in the cabin? Because it smelled like blood and hot pans all the way up the trail. We were all looking at him like, Fucking nope! We asked him what the fuck he's talking about with the girl he saw. He had come down the same trail that Tanner had, and came up on one of our buddies, standing in the middle of the trail, looking at him slack-jawed. He asked her a bunch of questions, but all she did was look at him. Then. She smiled at him, and he said that he just kept walking. She couldn't seem to keep up with him and kept lagging a little bit behind him. He said he asked her if she was hurt or something and if she needed any help, but all she did was continue to stare. Eventually, he had been walking and turned around a bend in the trail, but when he turned around and went to see if she was okay, the trail was empty. He had assumed that she had taken some sort of shortcut through the woods to our trailer. We tell him the whole story of what's been going on, and I half expected him to say that we were full of shit. But he just listened. He listened and sat down on one of the couches in the living room. 
he gets back to the girl, saying that when she kept trying to lag behind him, it kind of weirded him the fuck out, so he tried to keep her in front of him instead. But no matter how slow he walked, she was always lagging just a little bit behind. And that's... That's when he started to smell this really nasty smell that got stronger and stronger as he got to the camp. Eventually, when it was at its peak level of scent, she had said something really low that he didn't quite catch, and when he had turned around, she had been right the fuck up on him. He stepped back from her. It was at this point he asked her if she was okay, and that if she wasn't, that he could carry her the rest of the way. But she just kept staring. He said that he reached out for her, as in to grab her on the shoulder, but he must have misjudged the distance, because she was off to the side of where he had put his hand, like... Like she had moved while he was looking dead at her. So at this point, we know, we know this shit is real, unless Tanner is playing a joke, which we can tell he's not because he's almost pissing his pants. So they load up their rifles, we eat some more and we just kind of sit around until about 11. To this fucking day. Every time I think about this, I really pray to God that it was just some huge prank that my cousins played on me and just never revealed so that way I would shit bricks for the rest of my life. At around 11, the stink of copper turns into an actual nasty, gross, blood-like smell, like cooking blood in singed hair. Tanner and his cousin, who I found out was named Reese, get the fuck up and instantly grab the rifles. There's like a half knocking, half clawing at the door, and I shit you not. There's a voice. And it sounds like... Well... Um, you know those YouTube videos, the YouTube cats and dogs, whose owners teach them how to talk? It was kind of like that. It says in this weird, halting, weirdly toned voice, Let me the fuck in. Stop fucking playing. It made my fucking nuts creep up against my body, and one of the girls just starts crying and calling on Jesus. It was so obviously not a person talking. It didn't have the right... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cadence. It didn't have the right cadence. And that's some shit that I never realized until that moment, but all people have certain cadence when they talk, no matter what language. All people kind of have this certain... This... Rhythm. A rhythm to talking. This shit didn't have any kind of cadence or rhythm. Like... Just, I'm, I'm serious. Google those YouTube cats. That's what the fuck it sounded like outside the door. So now I'm in full-on terror mode. We keep yelling, who is it? Stop fucking around, man. And it just keeps saying, in, in, or let me the fuck in, for almost 15 minutes. Like, I'm serious. I'm serious about the cats. It's just, it sounded, it sounded like that almost, but not funny. I'm sorry for being on a tangent, but if you just... If you can't imagine how this shit sounded, then you can't imagine how fucked up the whole situation was. 
So then, the smell goes away for a while. And for the next hour or so, you can hear someone basically creeping around in the woods. Every couple of minutes, it'll come back to the door and say something. Finally, when the smell fades away, it's around two in the morning, and Reese says, Man, fuck this! He opens the door and walks outside with his rifle. He fires a shot into the air and says something to the effect of, In the name of Jesus Christ, go away! He fires two more times and then... From the woods. Right up against the river across the trailer. It sounds like something... It... It, it sounds like something is slowly gibbering and hooting. Then it starts screaming. It's screaming and it almost sounds like a woman and a cat screaming in a bag together. Like, I have seriously never heard any shit like that and you could hear the brush over that way starting to shake. Reese fires over into the tree line and then starts backing into the house. We lock the door and we can hear the shit keening and screaming. Reese says something had come out of the bushes, super low to the ground and crawling towards the cabin. He'd shot at it. Pretty much, that's how the rest of the night went. It was literally screaming constantly for the next two hours, and we could hear shit moving out into the tree line. But it never came back up to the cabin. Until... Everyone... had finally... fallen asleep. Tanner had been sitting in the chair, watching the door with his rifle. Nobody else heard or saw this, and he told me this two days later, after the whole thing had ended. He said that he had been nodding off after the screaming and noises finally stopped. And he had almost fallen asleep. When he saw... Someone come out of the bathroom and then lay down in the middle of the floor and go to sleep. He just assumed it was one of us. And proceeded to nod off. But then he said he kind of realized that something was... wrong. And while pretending to be asleep, he counted us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There were nine people in the cabin. He basically didn't want to try and shoot the fucking thing in the cabin and have it kill us all then and there. Or have Reese wake up and start shooting and then we kill ourselves. So... He stayed awake all night. All while pretending to be asleep. He said that, occasionally... It would stand up and kind of do this weird, jittery thing. Or heave like it was laughing. But then it would lay back down. I know, the story closes pretty weak, because from my perspective, nothing happened. We woke up and I noticed that Tanner was a little jittery in that he was avoiding looking at any of us. But we all ate some breakfast, packed up, and started walking to his house. 
He said that he'd stay last in the cabin. That he would lock up and bring me my uncle's keys. He told me to just start walking and that he'd catch up, which I really didn't want to fucking do. But I did anyway. We got a little bit up the path when he came running up. Basically, we just jogged back to his house. His cousin Reese took us home afterwards. Tanner told me what happened. There was a window in the bathroom. Tanner had gone back to lock up and happened to look in there. We were too stupid to lock a screenless window. The window was fucking up when he went in there. I'm guessing... I'm guessing he'd been doing that all along, waiting for us to fall asleep or slip up and then getting in among us. And... Another thing I didn't know until Tanner had told me... Was that it walked with us. All the goddamn way back to his house. And then... He said... It lagged to the back of the group. Looked him dead in the eyes. And then... Walked back into the woods. Hey everybody, it's Tenny Fandom here, and I just wanted to take a moment to say at the end of this, thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching, or listening, or however you guys chose to indulge in this content today. It truly means the world and more to me that you guys support me and my stuff. It makes me so unbelievably happy. And if you guys want to continue to support me, I have a Ko-Fi page as well as a Patreon. You guys can donate to me on my Ko-Fi if you want to, or you guys can check out my throne page and support me by buying me a gift or contributing to the funds of getting a bigger gift for me. I really appreciate it. The last gift that I got was a giant axolotl plush that one of my server members got for me, and I really, really love it. I named him Peppers. Anyway, other than those two options, you also have my Patreon. I've got two tiers at the moment, so feel free to check those out if you're curious. Speaking of my Patreon, I want to give a quick shout out to my current $9 patrons. Doctor, a fox, Aaron Kosterman, Ace Julio AO, Achilles Games 51, Action Bastard, Aiden S2014, Alexander Lee, Alexander Reyes, Andrew Annis, Andrew Anoy, Anon, Aupa, Arsalan Falati, Asala2011, Atheist Guy, Atomic Crown 51, Urizvil, Ben Hardison, Big Buddha, Ben Hardison, Big Buddha, Bizarre Dalek 31, Black Mass, Black Knight 1945, Bonnie Longo, Charles Harris, Charlie, Christopher Joycey, Claymore 2190, Cletus McEaterson, Condemned Bob, Courier Bry, Kristen Rivera, Cross MJ, Cyclone Clyde, D4C or Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, I still love that name, David D. Sanchez or Disavowed Ash, Devinder, Del Boy, Dimon Shark 15, Dom Addy, Draco, Dragon Blood Fire X, Dylan, Ellison Wilson, ELV, Ereviv, Eternal Ronin, Ulogy, Faucet of Drip, Flacco Alex, Gabo25, Gabriel Messa, Gabriel Reader, Gotcha Zack, Gamer Kid GP, Giovanni Gums, Golden Quake, Gray, Gray Veil, Guy, Hayden, I Am Random Samurai, Insanity Gamer X, Isaiah Leslie, It's John Connor, Jace, Jack, Jack the Bro, Jake the Snake A, James Ridley, Jay Torres, Just Jenner, Jobabo3, John Dunn, Jonesy, Jose Charas, Joseph Ownspipe, Julian Poo, K. Jake D, Cade, Kelgrom, Kiona Kislana, Last Kirky, Lawbringer DK, Leo Prime, Lex, Liam Hughes, Lonely Wolf, Lord Doggo, Maki Maki, Man of Many Bees, 
Mason Carter 777, Maximus Amadeo, Maxwell LeCure, Michael Cardenas, Minecraft Gamer 237, Mista Hayes, Nate Parody, Nathan Ortiz, Nenerice, Neva Weba, Nick, Old God's Wrath, Onyx, Orb Talus TM, PDP, Patrick Jan Jasua Davidson, Persona, Peter Rasmussen, Poyup, Roxy, Rylan Dixon, Rytex1234, Sam, Saisei Gaming, Shade, Shadow Fox, Sinblade723, Sleepy Sloth, Sneedly Chuck, Sonrox, Steve455, Styx, Swag, The Patman, The Void Dragon, The Noir Novelist at gmail.com, Thomas, Thoughty to Hotty, Throw225155, Tommy, Tommy Guns, Traces, Transferries, Tristan Smith, Uriel Herrera, Useless Sir, but I'm sure you're not useless at all. User Patron 98, Wayne Sampson, Will, XX Antitrix, Never Sorry 17 XX, XX Rabbit 07 XX, Zelred, Salfren, Zephyr Onyx, and Civis 01. Thank you guys so, so, so much for being my $9 patrons. It means the world and more to me that you guys support me and my stuff and want to support me even more by financially helping me. If there were any other words in the English dictionary that could say thank you to you guys, I would use them, but for now, I'll just settle for thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys so, 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 so much. Anyways, thank you guys so, so, so much for listening to today's audio or watching today's video or however you guys again decided to indulge in this content today. You guys truly mean the world and more to me, and I appreciate every single one of you. I'll catch you on the flip side, guys. Later! My uncle owns a big house and a bunch of trailers that they put out in the woods for humping. Blah. Humping. Humping. No! Uncle, no! Don't do that! No, Uncle, no! Oh god. That was so bad. I gotta buzz the track. That's nasty! <laughs> no humping in the woods! start they know i'm a city blah, 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 city <laughs> no why can't i read <laughs> <laughs>